I'm really excited about these books coming out next year. Hi everyone, my name is Koi. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here today. Today's video is going to be me talking about some 2022, that sounds weird to say, 2022 releases that I am very excited for. Basically to get this list, I have just sort of gone through Goodreads, looked at what I can see is coming out over the next year and thought, oh, I like the sound of that one and wrote myself a list. I may have missed some there obviously are probably going to be plenty of us are going to be announced that I don't even know about yet, but these are ones that I have on my radar already, quite a lot of them I've already pre-ordered and just some books that I'm looking forward to. We all need things to look forward to, don't we? Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you each of them, give you a bit of a synopsis and tell you why I'm excited to read them. So the first one I actually already have an arc for, so that's great because it means I get to read it sooner rather than later and that is Cherish Farrah by Bethany C. Morrow. So this author has also written the is it Song Below Water and I was intrigued by that one, I just never got around to actually reading it but this I believe is their first adult novel and I'm really excited about this one. I'm going to give you the synopsis synopsis and then tell you what it is that intrigues me about it. It comes out in February so it's February 8th apparently. I think a lot of these release dates are America by the way so it may be that I have to wait a little bit longer to get them but if they had a UK release date I have tried to find the UK date. So it says 17 year old Farrah Turner is one of two black girls in her country club community and the only one with black parents. Her best friend Cherish Whitman adopted by a wealthy white family is something Farrah likes to call WGS white girl spoiled. With Brianne and Jerry Whitman as parents Cherish is given the kind of adoration and coddling that even upper class black parents can't seem to afford and it creates a dissonance in her best friend that Farrah can exploit. When her own family is unexpectedly confronted with foreclosure, the calculating Farrah is determined to reassert the control she's convinced she's always had over her life by staying with Cherish, the only person she loves even when she hates her. A troubled Farrah manipulates her way further into the Whitman family but the longer she stays the more her own parents suggest that something is wrong in the Whitman house. She might trust them if they didn't think something was wrong with Farrah too. A strange things start happening in the Whitman household, debilitating illnesses, upsetting fever dreams, an inexplicable tension with Cherish's hothead boyfriend and a strange journal that seemed to keep track of what is happening to Farrah. It's nothing she can't handle but soon everything begins to unravel when the Whitmans invite Farrah closer and it's anyone's guess who's really in control. It's advertised as a mystery thriller which is not my normal thing but I'm actually really excited about this one. I just keep seeing it a lot on social media and then that synopsis is really sort of intriguing me at the minute so hopefully now I have the arc of this one I'll be able to get onto it soon. Next up we have another sort of debut adult novel and this one is by Nina Lecour. It's, it's called Yerba Buena. I've read quite a few of Nina Lecour's YA books so I'm excited that she's writing adult and again I will give you a synopsis of this one. It says when Sarah Foster runs away from home at 16 she leaves behind not only the losses that have shattered her world but the girl she once was capable of trust and intimacy. Years later in Los Angeles she's a sought-after bartender renowned as much for her brilliant cocktails as for the mystery that clings to her. Across the city Emily Dubois is in a holding pattern. In her seventh year and fifth major as an undergraduate she earns for the beauty and community her career old grandparents cultivated but is unable to commit. On a whim she takes a job arranging flowers at the glamorous restaurant Yerba Buena and embarks on an affair with a married owner. When Sarah catches sight of Emily one morning at Yerba Buena their connection is immediate but the damage both women carry and the choices they have made pulls them apart again and again. When Sarah's old life catches up to her upending everything she thought she wanted just as Emily has finally gained her own sense of purpose they must decide if their love is more powerful than their past. Again very intrigued by this one because I have really really liked what I've read from this author previously. She does write sapphic really relationships as well so it's going to be a female female relationship and yeah just really excited about that one again it is due out in February it is due out on February the 8th. Next up we have The Chandler Legacies by Afni Nazemian. So I read like a love story by this author earlier on this year and I loved that book so so much so when I saw that they had another book coming out straight on the list of anticipated releases so I'll just give you the synopsis of this one as well it says Beth Kramer is a towner who returns to her sophomore year after having enjoyed a year of judgment from her roommate Sarah but Sarah Brunson knows there's more to that story. Amanda Priya Spence Spencer is privileged daughter of NYC elites who is reeling from the realisation that her family name shielded her from the same fate as Sarah. Ramin Golifshah arrives at Chandler as a transfer student to escape the dangers of being gay in Iran only to suffer brutal hazing under the guise of tradition in the boys dorms and Freddie Bello is a senior who's no longer sure of his future but has fallen hard for Spence and knows he has to stand up to his friends after what happened to Ramin. At Chandler the elite boarding school these five teens are brought together in a, in a circle 
a coveted writing group where life-changing friendships are born and secrets are revealed. Their professor tells them to write their truths, but is the truth enough to change the long-standing culture of abuse at Chandler and can their friendship survive the fallout? So it's all set at a boarding school with all these different characters and all the different sort of struggles that they're going through and I, like I said, just really liked this author's previous book. So I'm hoping that I like this one as well. I don't know if I gave you a date for that one, but that one was also February. We're moving on to March now and we can't talk about March without talking about the new book by V. Schwab. We have Gallant, which is coming out on the 1st of March. So it's right at the beginning. And this is described as a secret garden meets Crimson Peak, which sounds fantastic. So let's read you the synopsis. Olivia Pryor has grown up in Maryland School for Girls and all she has of her past is her mother's journal, which seems to unravel into madness. Then a letter invites Olivia to come home to Gallant. Yet when Olivia arrives, no one is expecting her. But Olivia is not about to leave the first place that feels like home. It doesn't matter if her cousin Matthew is hostile or if she sees half-formed ghouls haunting the hallways. Olivia knows that Gallant is hiding secrets and she is determined to uncover them. When she crosses a ruined wall at just the right moment, Olivia finds herself in a place that is Gallant, but not. The manor is crumbling, the ghouls are solid and a mysterious figure rules over all. Now Olivia sees what has unraveled generations of her family and where her father may have come from. Olivia has always wanted to belong somewhere, but will she take her place as a prior, protecting our world against a master of the house, or will she take her place beside him? I'm very intrigued by this one. I love V.E. Schwab's writing. I don't need to tell you too much more about why I'm excited for this. I'm always going to be excited for a new V.E. Schwab book. The next one is one that I also have an arc for. I just got it last week and I'm really happy about that because I've been waiting for this author to put out another book. It is An Arrow to the Moon by Emily XR Pan. So this author has previously written The Astonishing Colour of After, which I loved. It broke my heart, but I loved it. And she finally has a new book coming out and I don't know too much about it. I'm going to read the synopsis with you now but just judging by the last book I'm really really excited for this one so it says Hunter Yee has perfect aim with a bow and arrow but all else in his life fears wrong he's sick of being haunted by his family's past mistakes the only thing keeping him from running away are his little brother a supernatural wind and the bewitching girl at his new high school Luna Chang dreads the future graduation looms ahead and her parents expectations are stifling when she begins to break the rules she finds her life upended by the strange new boy in her class the arrival of unearthly fireflies and an ominous crack spreading across the town of Fairbridge as Hunter and Luna navigate their family secrets, everything around them begins to fall apart. All they can depend on is their love, but time is running out and fate will have its way. So our last book did have like magical realism in it. This sounds like it's going to be along those lines as well, maybe a little bit more magical this time. But like I said, I really loved her last book and I loved her writing style. So I'm hoping that this one is fantastic. We then have The No Show by Beth O'Leary. So Beth O'Leary is an author that I've read all of her books from now. So she's got The Flat Share, The Switch and The Road Trip. And now we have The No Show, which is coming out in April and this one says it's three women three dates one missing man 8 52 siobhan's been looking forward to a breakfast date with joseph she was surprised when he suggested it she normally sees him late at night in her hotel room breakfast with joseph on valentine's day surely means something so where is he 14 43 miranda's hoping that valentine's day lunch with carter will be the perfect way to celebrate her new job it's a fresh start and a sign that her grown-up life is finally falling into place she's been dating carter for five months now and things are getting serious but why hasn't he shown up? 1830, Joseph Carter agreed to be Jane's fake boyfriend at a colleague's engagement party. They've not known each other long, but their friendship is fast becoming the brightest part of her new life in Winchester. Joseph promised to save Jane tonight, but he's not here. Meet Joseph Carter. That is, if you can find him. I'm intrigued by this. Obviously, it's one guy who's seen three different women and I'm guessing that they're all going to find out about each other and I'm excited to see what Beth O'Leary does with that one. Then in May, we have a book which is by an author who I own two books from and I'm not read either of them yet, but I'm still excited for a new one to come out and that is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. So I own Beach Read and People We Meet on Vacation, but I've not read them. I hopefully will have read them by the time this one comes out because otherwise I know what will happen. I'll buy this one and I'll have all three and not have read any of them. But this is another adult romance about books it says one summer two rivals a plot twist they didn't see coming Nora Stevens life is books she's read them all and she is not that type of heroine not the plucky one not the laid-back dream girl and especially not the sweetheart in fact the only people Nora is a heroine for are her clients for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent and her beloved little sister Libby which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls North Carolina for the month of August when Libby begs her for a sister's trip away with visions of a small town transformation for Nora who she's convinced needs to become the heroine in her own story but instead of picking 
picnics in meadows or run-ins with a handsome country doctor, a bulging forearm bartender. Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lastra, a bookish brooding editor from back in the city. It would be a meet cute if not for the fact that they've met many times and it's never been cute. If Nora knows she's not an ideal heroine, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero. But as they are thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences, no editor worth their salt would allow. What they discover might just unravel the carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves. We then have Book of Night by Holly Black, which is a new adult book by Holly Black. It seems like a lot of these books this year are adult debuts, which I'm really excited for because I've been reading more adult books anyway. So this one says, in Charlie Hall's world, shadows can be altered for entertainment and cosmetic preferences, but also to increase power and influence. You can alter someone's feelings and memories, but manipulating shadows has a cost, with the potential to take hours or days from your life. Your shadow holds all the parts of you you want to keep hidden, a second self standing just to your left, walking behind you into lit rooms, and sometimes it has a life of its own. Charlie is a low-level con artist, working as bartender while trying to distance herself from the powerful and dangerous underground world of shadow trading. She gets by doing odd jobs for her patrons and the naive new money in her town at the edge of the Berkshires. But when a terrible figure from her past returns, Charlie's present life is thrown into chaos and her future seems at best unclear and at worst non-existent. Determined to survive, Charlie throws herself into a maelstrom of secrets and murder, setting her against a cast of doppelgangers, mercurial billionaires, shadow thieves and her own sister, all desperate to control the magic of the shadows. I've read the Cool Prince series from Holly Black before and really enjoyed that, so I'm excited to see what she does with an adult book. Now we kind of have the opposite, actually, where we have an author who normally writes adult or new adult, actually, writing a YA book and that is I Kiss Shara Wheeler by Katie McQuiston. This is one that I'm really looking forward to because I've loved both of Katie McQuiston's previous books so I have such high hopes for this one. So let me give you the synopsis of this. It says Chloe Green is close to winning. After her mom's moved her from SoCal to Alabama for high school, she spent the past four years dodging gossipy classmates and a puritanical administration at Willow Grove Christian Academy. The thing that's kept her going, winning Valor Victorian, her only rival, prom queen Shara Wheeler, the principal's perfect progeny. But a month before graduation, she Shara kisses Chloe and vanishes. On a furious hunt for answers, Chloe discovers she's not the only one Shara kissed. There's also Smith, Shara's longtime quarterback sweetheart, and Rory, Shara's bad boy neighbour with a crush. The three have nothing in common except Shara and the annoyingly cryptic notes she left behind. But together they must untangle Shara's trail of clues and find her. It'll be worth it if Chloe can drag Shara back before graduation to beat her fair and square. Thrown into an unlikely alliance, chasing a ghost through parties, break-ins, puzzles, and secrets revealed on monogram stationery, Chloe starts to suspect there might be more to this small town than she thought and maybe probably not but maybe more to Shara too. Again really excited about this one just because case of a question I don't need to say anything else. I'm gonna leave it there because I do have a few more but they're all coming out in the second half of the year and like dates and things are subject to change anyway and I'm just gonna leave this as my anticipated books for the first half of the year. That last one comes out in May and I didn't see anything in June that I'm particularly excited about at the minute but I will do a revisit of this video halfway through next year so we can see what I'm anticipating for the second half of the year when I have a few more to talk about because at the minute I've got about three but I think that's plenty for me to be excited about for the first half of the year. They are generally all by people that I've read from before or I've wanted to read from before there's going to be plenty more that I'm excited about. I'm sure there's going to be loads of like debut offers and things as well. I just honestly don't know what's coming out yet, but I'm excited to find out. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff down below and let me know what your anticipated releases are for the next year. And I will see you guys tomorrow with a new video. Bye.